Hey everyone, this is your favorite friend Jay, and today I'm so excited to interview Jordan Sarf, whose short film Manicure I had the pleasure of watching. It's an amazing body horror film, which are my favorite genre, I gotta tell you. And it's it incorporates a lot, but mainly it's about our bodies and how they relate to our mental health. So first of all, how are you, Jordan? I'm doing well. Thank you for setting this up. This is great. Okay, so I want to know you and Carlos. How did you guys get together and decide to start working on this film? So I met Carlos almost 10 years ago by accident at a, like a film program out in L.A. And the following summer, we uh, you know, hadn't talked to him. We went to another pro uh, class and I just uh, coincidentally ran into him. And I knew this is someone I wanted to work with uh, forever. Uh, we each went to college, came back and started working on projects. And this is a project I wrote um, probably eight or nine years ago. Uh, and it was just something important to me to talk about how, you know, talk about uh, how people uh, have these internal pressures and how sometimes they can be so excessive that we're taking them out on ourselves in a physical way. And I just knew that it was something I wanted to tell. To tell and uh, Carlos was the guy to bring it out to life. So, I, you know, I worked on the script, he did a, a polish and we just kind of worked together to bring everything that happened, so. It's wonderful that you chose a female body horror short film because, first of all, they are my favorites. And I think that us females, we have a lot of pressure going on on us. The way to look perfect, how a single, like a mistake or a flaw could turn our whole days, you know, like sour. So what I want to know is why did you pick this very feminine perspective to tell your tale? Yeah, so um, I always, you know, I, I, you know, every once in a while I get a manicure. And I always think it's a soothing thing, but I have uh, my sister or my mother, you know, they go, they get their nails and they're like, oh, like, like I would look and be like, oh, their nails look nice. And, like, and she'd be like, oh no, this is chipped. Or like, this is messed up. But like, I wouldn't know that, but you know, you know, women, you know, they, they my sister and my mother, they wouldn't know. So um, I noticed that and I'm like, well, you know, that's something really small, but like, what if that's something that's really important to someone? And what if that's something that's so important to someone that the slightest infraction could set them off and completely ruin the whole experience of getting a manicure because at the end of the day it's like a relaxing thing it's not a massage but it's you know you sit there you relax and it's nice so i i thought why don't you know taking something so we'll call it peaceful and showing it in a completely different light i thought was the, the best way to go about it so this is wonderful okay so the first scene it, for me at first at least it seems as if it's like a sushi bar the way she was just setting all the pieces together it felt like okay am I in a restaurant or is this like a manicure what is going on how did you set this I know this is like a directorial question but I'm just like trying to understand with you how was this shot set because it was so beautiful so aesthetic but at the same time it was very confusing like for me it was wow what is going on is this a meal maybe it was very ritualistic which is what I loved about it yeah so you know um, you know, when you have your, that type of pressure on yourself, you're like, everything needs to be a certain way. Like you said, like a ritual. So having Eleanor, who is, you know, the, the character in the film, line all of the material, the, the tools up in a specific way was really like a powerful thing to say, well, it's just, she's just doing her nails. Why is she going the extra length? What is she doing? Why does it, you know, what is, is something different going on here? So with setting, making that the opening shot. I was saying, you know, we're going to see something that people do every day, but you're going to look at it at a completely different light. So. Totally. So, okay. So this is a tale. You might have used this medium and this woman to kind of tell a tale of mental illness or mental problems. How do you feel that you expressed something that you felt yourself or you've seen through this tale? You know what I mean? Like this is Eleanor's tale, but how does Jordan, you know, like comment on mental illness and how it could just go down or degrade or whatever in this format yeah so you know uh i don't i don't get manicures too often but um i will say that uh taking something that's everyday routine and showing how somebody can not only make it so they put so much pressure on themselves to be perfect in that situation but taking them out of themselves when they're not perfect that could be related to anybody so using the manicure as kind of the the medium for that um you know, people can relate to it in their own field. I mean, we were going to film festivals, like uh, we went to the Woodstock Film Festival and I had a, was an older woman who came up to me after the screening and said, I really connected with that film. 
And I said, I, she said, I, I don't get mad about my nails, but I felt exactly the way she feels. And I had other, even some of the, you know, guys too, and other people came up to me and said, I feel those pressures and it's evident. So um, the manicure may not specifically relate to everybody, but the feelings that she feels uh, towards herself and what's, what's going on are definitely universal to people now. So it's definitely like I felt it relatable because I think I was on this workshop in a film for a film festival and I was in a different city that I am and my nail chipped and I went around crazy looking for a pharmacy or something to just get a nail clipper and the process itself was just exhausting because I also had fears that I would break my whole nail so I could relate although I'm not really you know like into manicures and pedicures and stuff like that because I'm not that feminine but at the same time I could relate totally to the idea of having a chip nail and how it could cause panic in your head because you might have had something underlying like, oh my God, am I going to lose my whole nail? What's going on? And then it escalates. So I think you did it brilliantly. And I love right. how it flowed throughout the film. So kudos to you for that. Oh, thank you. And listen, I got to give Carlos a lot of credit. I feel, you know, I've been writing the script for so long and, you know, originally started when I get I started in high school. So using my high school self, it was more pressures about trying to get into college. So there was, all right, well, how do I do that? And it was originally going to be more of a student style film, but more like the main character is going to be a student working on homework. And that was the original base. And it made this transition as I got older. I'm like, you know, that that's more of a specific thing. I really want to be a little more universal. And the manicure thing clicked with me immediately. So Carlos did a really great job. I worked with him for about a probably about six months to a year, just talking about the idea, talking about how we needed to look. And we got funding together and eventually we landed Steph Dawson, who's our lead actress. She's, she more than loved, mm -hmm. fell in love with the project. She, um, you know, her background is Hunger Games. So it was cool to work with someone of that caliber. And she had her own personal connection to the film as well when we told her about our idea and why we're really making it. So it was nice that me, the director and, you know, Steph, our lead actress, all Three of, three of us were all on the same page with what we wanted to do here. So, Okay, so as a writer myself, do you ever feel that you want to be a director or do you just enjoy being the writing part of the filmmaking process? Oh, I love to direct. I mean, I, I do it on the side, I do it for fun. My I know my strengths are really in the writing, producing side of things. So after I wrote the script and handed it to Carlos, I said, all right, I'm going to, this is the best way I described it to him. I said, I'm going to set up the Ferrari, but I'm going to give you the keys to drive the race. Like, that's the best way I could put it um, and he really you know hit the ground running and did a great job I do love to direct though I just knew that with a film this serious um, Carlos is a really strong filmmaker he has a really good uh, visual visual ideas and I just knew that he was the guy to bring this to life so I didn't mind handing it to him he did a great job uh, there are other projects I direct myself and we kind of balance back and forth with that so okay so I heard you in an interview say that you don't like horror movies is this true yeah, well, I don't like horror films. Uh, it was, you know, when I watch a horror film, like a paranormal activity, I love to research everything beforehand, how they made the film. That way, when I watch it, I'm not as scared. Like, I still haven't seen Hereditary, won't do it. Uh, Midsommar, won't do it. Uh, but I've seen some, you know, like The Omen. I've seen like uh, Rosemary's Baby. Some like real like old school horror films. Like, I would say one of my favorite movies of all time is The Thing, which is John, uh, John Carpenter. And, you know, it... The, you know, I don't like horror films, but I will say that this film was, it was important to make this film almost like we didn't really envision it being a horror film. We wanted it to be more of a psychological drama, um, but, you know, it was so horrifying of what you're watching that we kind of fell in that genre. So I, I embraced it. We went to a lot of horror festivals and uh, I was scared most of the time. <laughs> so, um, but I got over it and, uh, again, talking with filmmakers after about how they made their films, too, really opened my eyes to the genre and how great it is. So, Okay, so your next step would be maybe turning it into a feature, or are you just dreaming of another different project? What are you yeah. working on? So we're working with, I can't really say the names, but we're working with two streaming platforms right now to, you know, house the film, which is great. And I had people approach us about making it a feature, and I had written a couple ideas, but... You know, it was really meant to be a short. We're working on two new, new films coming out. One we're shooting in April and one in June. Uh, our April shoot I'm going to direct. That's a sports comedy. And the, uh, the June shoot is going to be more of a drama. So two two great ideas. Uh, Carlos is going to direct the uh, the drama. I'm going to direct the, uh, the sports comedy. So 
Wonderful. So where can people find the film? Will it be on? Okay, so it might be on a streaming platform, right? People would just have to tune in to your social media to find out, right? Absolutely. Yeah, you can uh, check me out at uh, ineffable or JS dot underscore dot pictures. Uh, you could reach me at revved up 17 on Instagram. Uh, again, we don't know which platform we're going to pick yet. But once we do, we're going to make a huge uh, social media push. So it'll be available to everybody and that will Glad we'll, again, we'll be posting everything, so you'll see it. Okay, thank you so much, Jordan. It was just a pleasure talking to you. The film is great. I can't wait for everyone to watch it. Thank you so much for talking to me. Absolutely, thank you. Yeah, goodbye. Bye.